All right, so we're in Calculus 30, and our first unit is called Background Essentials. It'll cover everything that we need to know for the rest of the course. And our first topic is something called Interval Notation. That's 1.1. So our curriculum outcome, there actually isn't any, or you could consider it um, filling all the curriculum outcomes because we need this as a basis for the rest of the course. Our lesson objectives is to learn how and when to use interval notation and its equivalent forms, to learn the different ways to combine intervals, and that would be through intersection, union, and complement, and number three, to use intervals to represent some real-world situations. So in pre-calc 30, we learned that some answers aren't written as single numbers, and we can have multiple answers or even a whole range of numbers as an answer. So for example, we know that the range of y equals 2 to the x is y is greater than 0. That's the range, because we know that the graph of y equals 2 to the x is an exponential graph, and that the range, it goes really, really close to 0, but never actually reaches 0, and it goes upwards um, to infinity. So there are a number of ways to write these ranged answers, and we'll use the following example to show the three different ways. So our first example here is 2x minus 3 is less than 5. If we were to solve that, we just move the 3 to the other side by adding 3. So we get 2x is less than 8. And our final answer would then be x is less than 4. So here's our three ways. Number one, we could write this answer in solution set notation. So solution set notation always had this sort of squiggly brackets. And we would say x colon, just to say this is a variable we're dealing with. And we would say x is less than 4. And then in some cases, you might even throw in a x er. So x is all the real numbers that happen to be less than 4. We have, you could do this as a number line. We did that probably in grade nine or 10. Um, so we could have a four here, and now we want everything where x is less than four. So we would have an open circle because it's not equal to four, and then we would shade to the left where everything is less than four. And now today we will learn about something called interval notation. So things you need to know about interval notation is that we used a curved set of brackets instead of a less than or a greater than sign. And we will use square brackets instead of a less than or equal to or a greater than or equal to sign. So in this case, we're saying that x is less than 4. And we want everything less than 4. So that means everything to the left. So that means over that direction is negative infinity. And if x is less than 4, then we've got um, an open set of brackets because there is no equal sign with the less than. All right, some more examples. It says, write the following inequalities in interval notation. And our first one is negative 9, which happens to be less than x, which is less than or equal to 26. Well, we use open sets of brackets or curved brackets for anything that doesn't have an equal sign, and we will use square brackets for anything that does have an equal sign. So this one is just simply written as open bracket, negative 9, all the way to 26, square bracket. One thing you need to be careful of is to know when you're talking about points in the coordinate plane because these open brackets are used and when we're actually talking about intervals. You don't want to confuse the two. Um, our second one, x is greater than 5. Well, with x is greater than 5, we know that we have 5 on one end and that goes all the way to infinity on the other end. Now, when we're talking about infinity and negative infinity, we always use an open set of brackets because infinity and negative infinity doesn't end. Or don't end and so you don't uh, you can't say that it's closed off that's why it always has to be in an, an open ended interval so write the following intervals in solution set notation now we're going to be going backwards negative five negative two to five sorry we need to use squiggly brackets and then we use the colon and so we want everything from negative two inclusive we say um, because there is a square set of brackets so that includes the number and all the way to five and then we end the squiggly brackets. And the second one, all the way from negative infinity to negative three inclusive, inclusive, sorry. So we want everything that's less than negative three. So we would say then x is less than, and we can use an equal sign because of the square brackets, less than or equal to negative three. All right, and now finally write the following in set and interval notation. x colon x is less than eight. So you can combine set and interval notation. It would just look something like this. You still say x colon, and then we're just going to write this part as an interval. So x is less than 8 means it goes from negative infinity all the way up to 8. And over here, we've got x is in between 100 and 110, but it is equal to 110. So you can use x colon again, and then it would be 100 over here. 
and that's with an open bracket, and then 110 over here, and that is with a closed bracket. So there's also a way to combine intervals and how to write that. So there are also ways and situations where you need to combine intervals in different ways. So the first one is called the union of intervals, and it's represented by a, a big wide U. And so it is all the elements or numbers that are in one interval or the other interval or both. So for example, if we're saying we're going to find the union between negative infinity to 3 and 2 to 20, we're going to look for all the numbers that are in one, this interval or that interval. So one way that I like to do this is just with a simple number line. helps me organize my, my uh, information. So in one case, I've got uh, 3, and I want everything from negative infinity to 3. So basically, I'm taking all this, but that's an open circle. And then I've got from 2 to 20. So 2 goes from here all the way to 20 over here. So if I'm looking for all the elements that are in one interval or the other, that means I've got all the way from negative infinity up to um, 20. And 20 wasn't included, and neither was negative infinity to begin with, so that is our final answer. Because these numbers, all the way from negative infinity and all the way to 20, are in this interval or that interval. All right, second way to combine intervals is with the intersection of intervals. And these are the elements that are in one interval and the other interval. So really this intersection, which looks like kind of a upside down, or like an N, or an upside down U, is the numbers in common. So you have to remember that part. So for this example, we've got negative six to five and negative two to eight. Again, I'll use my number line. I've got negative six here to five, which makes it open right here and close right there. And then I've got from negative two, so that's somewhere in here, all the way to eight. And that is an, oh, a, close, or a closed circle for negative two and an open circle for eight. So if I'm looking for the thing that's in common, that'll just be the overlapping part. And that would be from negative two with a closed bracket because it's included all the way to five with a closed bracket because it's also included. So the third and final way to combine intervals is uh, using the complement of an interval, and that's denoted by a line over top of the interval that you're talking about, which in this case we're using an example of A. So if A is a specific interval, then the complement, or A bar is what we call it sometimes, is where A does not exist. So for example, if A exists from negative 2 to 5, um, with the open bracket by the negative 2 and, and a closed bracket by the 5, we need to find out what A bar is. So A bar is going to be everything that A is not. And that makes it negative infinity all the way to negative 2. And since negative 2 wasn't included in A, it will be included in A bar. Or it could be um, from 5 all the way to infinity. No, but 5 would not be included because it is included in A, so it can't be included in A bar. So that would be 5 all the way to infinity. So the complement is the opposite of the actual interval. So here's our second example. If A is from negative 2 to 4, B is from negative 1 to 8, and C is from negative infinity to 3, find the following set of numbers. So we're looking for A and B, or C or A complement. So the way I remember which is or and which is and is that this upside down U looks a lot like an N, and so the word and has an N in it. That's the way I remember it. But anyway, so we need to graph these things. I think, again, the number line works best. So the first one is from negative 2 to 4, and that is A. So that is included on negative 2, but open at 4. Maybe I'll switch colors. B is going to be from negative 1 to 8, and that's included on both. And so for this first part, we're looking for a and B, so we only want the stuff that's in common. So our answer there would be everything from negative 1 to 4 not included. All right, on the same number line, we're going to use uh, C and A bar. Well, the C interval is from negative infinity to 3, and so that would be 3 would be there. So we're looking at everything. Oh, that's an open circle at 3, from negative infinity all the way to 3. And A bar would be everything that is not in A. So A bar would be the opposite of A. 
So A was in blue. So we've got a closed circle for 4 and an open circle at negative 2. And since A was between those two numbers, that means A bar is everything but those two numbers. All right. So we're looking for everything between our C or A bar. So we're going to look for anything in those two intervals. And so since uh, C was everything from negative infinity all the way up to 3, we can still keep that. And A bar um, had from 4 to infinity, so we will keep that. All right. So now we're looking for anything negative 1 to 4 or negative infinity to 3 or 4 to infinity. And that, since negative 1 to 4 covers that interval from 3 to 4, that means our final answer is going to be everything. So negative infinity all the way to infinity. So in summary, uh, there are different ways to write an answer that happens to be a range of values. We could use a number line, we could use set notation, we could use interval notation, or we could use set and interval notation together. The question will usually tell you what they're asking. And there are three different ways to, to combine intervals, and that is through union, which is A or B, intersection, which is A and B, or complement, which would be like A bar or B bar, or whatever your interval was denoted, but which letter that is. And so your assignment is on pages 4 to 5. You could do anything from 1 to 12. Good luck, and we'll see you in class.